Hey, hey, you guys, it's Laura Wells. I'm excited to be on another video for you guys. I wanna talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is sales. Um, I've actually been involved in sales in a long, for a long, long time. I'd love to know if this is a, an industry, a, a profession that you're involved in too. Um, so if it is, let me know. And if you're on, I wanna say hello to you guys um, who are watching on replay. Of course, first, everybody knows that online videos, uh, the first few seconds, we always have replay viewers. So I feel like y'all are like secret society. Hi, for those of you who are hopping on. Uh, I always say hello to replay first because I feel like they get like the very first little bits because um, they always catch the beginning and those of you who are hopping on live let me know that you're here I'd actually love to know what is it like where you are there's some crazy weather that's going on um, I live in Georgia we're in the southeast and I know my friends in Texas and Oklahoma like y'all are having like monsoons and tornadoes and all kinds of crazy stuff happening around there so um, it actually just started thundering and raining and lightning and stuff on our um, we just had a team zoom and I was so worried that like our power was gonna go out like right in the middle of it because all of a sudden we were like whoosh, like crazy lightning and all this kind of stuff. So anyways, hey Brian. Hey, if you are hopping on live, let me know that you're here. Hey James. And I'm actually gonna give you guys some sales tips, some actual strategies that I use in my business. This has actually helped me be a top sales performer in multiple different companies and network marketing, but also multiple different industries, different professions. So if sales is something that you love or if sales is something that you don't love, something that you don't feel confident in, I want you to really watch this video and probably even take some notes. I'm actually gonna give y'all some tactical training. Um, a lot of times I share like inspirational stuff, motivation um, kind of stuff. Tonight's training is gonna be tactical. I wanna show you guys some how-tos. It's also gonna be industry generic. So if you are in the network marketing space and you've got a team in your network marketing who um, they would like some sales training, this is going to be a video you should probably share out to your team. It is going to help a lot of people, especially if somebody doesn't feel confident in their sales. Um, if they feel like they're not good at sales, they kind of feel a little icky about it. Um, that I was totally like that in the beginning, so I can relate. Also, if you have ever had someone who wanted to join your team, but maybe they're not using your product yet, and they don't quite think that they could sell it or promote it without using the product first, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip at the end of this video. That's gonna be so good. This is one of those things that I feel like people don't talk about this stuff and it's, it's almost like it's almost like sell selling or sales like the s word like I don't feel like we talk about it very much do you or when people talk about it it's kind of icky you know what I mean um so I'm not selling y'all like books and courses and all that kind of stuff I'm just giving you guys what works for me what I teach my team um and I just kind of share it to you guys too so if you share it though, I would love to give you a shout out. So if you share it to your team pages, also if you are friends with other network marketers, people who are in sales on your Facebook and you share this out to them because you want to give them value, give them um, something to watch that's gonna help them grow their business, share it out and let me know that you've shared it. I would love to give you a full name shout out just as a thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this too. I'm gonna share it out to a couple of groups that I'm in as well. So one of the things that I have noticed is that a lot of people, um, they don't feel comfortable with sales because they haven't had success yet. Would you agree? Like if you were super uber successful in your business and you were like at the top of the charts in sales, you would probably feel more confident about selling, right? The reason most people aren't confident in selling and they feel like they're a little like Bambi, <laughs> I'm dating myself, but Bambi, like on, on fragile legs when it comes to selling is just because you haven't built up those muscles yet. You haven't developed the strength yet because you don't have enough practice yet. Um, also, maybe you've been on the other end of experiences that weren't so great. Have you ever been sold to by somebody who's super icky? Um, somebody who's really slimy, somebody who loves taking advantage of people, uh, you know, just those kinds of things. Y'all, like if you have been, I, nothing against car dealers. I've got a lot of good friends who, um, who work at car dealerships, nothing against y'all. 
I don't ever, like as a whole demographic, say all y'all are vultures, okay? However, how many of you have ever gone to a car dealer lot and you're like, I don't wanna get out of the car because they're gonna swarm me, <laughs> okay? Like, have you ever felt like that? Why do you feel like that? Because odds are you've probably been in a situation where you feel like on the other end of it, like, oh, car dealers and sales sucks. Like, oh, it's just so gross. It makes me feel like, like I've got the cooties, right? Same thing for door-to-door, uh, -door, right? Like door-to-door um, -door salespeople. You know, that's just a profession like anything else. But you've probably had an experience where people in those professions do it ugly and they do it the wrong way and they make you feel icky. Therefore, if you're in sales, you might be projecting how you felt in those situations onto yourself, thinking, I could never be in sales because I'm not good at that or I don't want to make people feel that way. Like you already feel some type of way about people in sales based on your own past experiences, right? So either you've been on the receiving end of really not great experiences when it comes to sales or maybe you have been in sales and you got rejected and you didn't like the feeling of being rejected um, and you're wanting to avoid that at all costs. That's a whole nother video that I've done, by the way, where like Aunt Matilda at Thanksgiving says, ew, and they don't like your business, and you're like, no way, your brain is telling you to justify all the reasons why this isn't a business for you. That's a whole nother video. Y'all should go look that up. It's so good. Um, but I want to give you guys tactical sales training on like actually how to increase your sales without it feeling weird, without it being gross or bad strategies that leave people feeling like they need to go take a shower, <laughs> okay? actually how to grow your sales and make people thank you for selling them on something. How would that feel? I get thank you cards from customers all the time. Thank you so much for selling this to me. How, how does that happen? Like if you want that to happen, I'm going to tell you how, okay? All right. So the first thing I want to show you guys is belief. We talk about belief quite a bit. Belief in terms of you have to be somewhat confident in what you're selling in order to relay that information. The art of sales is simply a transfer of belief, a transfer of trust from one person to another. That is sales. If we just wanted to wrap it up right now, that's it. <laughs> selling is simply your belief transferred onto someone else and making them have belief too, okay? Now, how do you get from point A to point B? How do you cross that bridge? So if you really are just starting or if you're stalled out, this is, this is a really good strategy, you guys. If you are in network marketing especially, maybe you've been in for a couple of years and you're just kind of stalled out. Maybe your business is like kind of a standstill. If that's you, I want you to go back um, to the basics. And here's what I mean by that. Go back and start listening to stories and testimonies of real people, not just promoters who get paid to say that. I want you to go back and actually listen to real stories from real people who are using your product or utilizing the service that you offer, okay? I want you to plug into it so deep that you're finding those stories and you are filling your mind with what this product or what your service is doing for others. Not you, doing for others. Because here's the innate DNA that's within us. We are designed as humans to help one another by nature. If you notice that in disasters, in chaos, in earthquakes and hurricanes and tornadoes and terrorist attacks and all this kinds of stuff, Here's the thing, have you ever found it funny, or interesting rather, that color, race, background, sexual orientation, none of that matters in times of chaos, none. You see elderly white folks helping, being helped by young teenage black men. You see gays helping straights, no one questions. No one says, before I help you out and, and save you from this flood water, I just need to know a couple things first. No, they don't. Because why? 
innately we are created to help each other. That's literally how we're designed. So relating to sales, you have to understand that what you have is a solution. You have to believe that first. You have to believe that you have a solution to something that someone else needs. Then it literally just becomes a part of your DNA. When you know that you know that you know, what you have helps someone else. And when you find that person who needs that thing, it is a thing that comes from within you and you might do it all 50 shades of wrong and have no idea what you're doing and you may stumble over your words, but by gosh, nothing is gonna stop you from helping that person. Nothing. The same way that a regular civilian wants to run towards a fire to help someone who's burning. Y'all, it is just a human nature thing, okay? So in terms of sales, you have to have that belief that what you offer is a solution. If you are stalled out in your business or if you're just getting started, that is priority number one. That is the first tip I have to share with you is go back to the basics and start listening to those stories. Fill your mind with what is this product doing? What are the results people are getting? Okay, if you are new to my videos, type new below. I'd love to give you a hello. And if you are sharing this video, please let me know that below. This video is gonna teach you all about sales as much as I can cram into this video. I'll keep it as short as possible. I'm gonna teach you about sales. I'm gonna teach you um, how to sell when you don't even know anybody. I'm gonna teach you how to go um, start conversations with people that you might not even know yet. I'm also gonna teach you how to sell without you ever experiencing the product first. A lot of people are like, I don't think I can promote something and sign up for this business if I haven't ever um, experienced this product. If I can't even afford to take the product, then how can I sell it? How can I talk about it before I have a personal experience with it? I'm gonna actually show you, I'm gonna tell you my secret. <laughs> I've had to do that and had to do it super successfully. Sherry K, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so first things first. Sell is to serve. To sell is to serve. To serve is to sell. You have to get that in your mind, okay? They are literally one and the same. Your belief is totally a big part of it. So here's my little like hack, okay? Y'all know I love like mind hacks, right? So I want you to think of two things, okay? And a lot of people are familiar with the first one, which is like a memory jogger. Who do you know? Who do you know? You could scroll through Facebook, you could look through your phone contacts, you could um, start thinking like stores around your area, like who owns the dry cleaners, who runs the pizza place, who's the hair salon person, who's the barber, who does nails, who's the local massage therapist, who's a realtor. Um, right? Things like that. So we all know, like, who'd you go to college with? Who'd you go to high school with? Like we all, everybody knows that one. Okay. What a lot of people don't know to do is how to reverse engineer it. Y'all, I think this is probably the number one thing that has helped me a ton in sales is that I reverse engineer it. I don't start with a memory jogger. I know that comes as like a huge shocker to a ton of people. I don't start with the list of 100 people that you know. I don't do that. What I do first before I even go there is I look at the back of a product or my personal experience or those stories that I just heard in that video or on that call and I start listing out what benefits has that person received from this product. Okay, so if you are in like health and wellness, for example, energy, mental clarity, weight loss, um, their knee doesn't hurt anymore, they stopped having headaches, inflammation is down, let's talk about skincare, the redness in their face has gone away, their blemishes and acne have cleared up, the fine lines in their face are going away, they feel more confident without makeup. Guys, they're, they're looking more youthful and young, they're getting carded, <laughs> like I don't know, whatever, right? So you start listening to stories and hearing people's experiences with your product or with your service. I actually was with a service-based company a couple years ago. I would actually listen to people as they shared like how much their bills were reduced, um, how much better the service was, like things like that. Talking about the business side of things. Were they able to pay off their student loans? Does that mom now able to afford gymnastics lessons for her kids? 
Can she go to the grocery store and not have to literally worry about what the checkout counter is gonna say? You have to realize that it's not even just your product that you're selling, it's your business opportunity too. What can it do for people? So I literally start there. Before I even start with a memory jogger, I list out what am I actually selling? Newsflash, you're not selling supplements. You're not selling skincare, you're not selling cell phone service, you're not selling CBD oil, you're not selling the actual product, you're not. When you start removing that part and you start thinking you're selling time freedom, you're selling more energy, you're selling a mom being able to get off off the couch and stop being frumpy and actually go play with her kids. You're selling uh, your, the ability to date night. You're selling the ability to put your kids in private school. You're selling the ability for somebody to pay off their student loans. You're selling the ability for somebody to actually like go throw the ball because their shoulder doesn't hurt anymore, right? That's what you're selling. You're selling the end result of things that you know exist. Is that making sense? Um, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so reverse engineer the benefits of your product or your service first. Have that, y'all, like here's a great tip for you. You've gotta keep this stuff until it is ingrained in your heart. You have to keep it in front of your mind. Put it as a list in your phone. Put it on a post-it note next to your computer. The benefits, energy, mental clarity, weight loss, mom feeling great again, dad playing with his kid, shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. Every time you hear stories, jot down a little bullet point of what that person's like heart tug moment was because I will tell you a secret. Your brain is wired to when you see someone posting on Facebook about how much pain they're in or how they're feeling tired at 8 p.m. or whatever their struggle is, your brain is wired to provide a solution for them. That's why people post it on Facebook anyway. They're probably looking for a solution. They're either looking for solutions or sympathy, okay? So you can give them both. I am so sorry you're going through that. That sounds awful. Are you open to finding a solution if I could point you in the right direction? I think I found something that could help you. Maybe they're not open to it. Maybe they like struggling. I don't know, there are people out there who like to struggle, <laughs> okay? But if they're open to actually having a solution, your brain is hardwired to help. Think of natural disasters. Think of all the times that people run to help other people. We are wired that way, it's in our DNA. So reverse engineer it, that is the first thing that you need to do after belief, after you like download that information into your brain of what can this thing do, what can this product do for people? Not the benefits, not the ingredient mumbo jumbo, not all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the heartfelt actual stories. Listen to those. Hopefully your company has like videos or calls or meetings or something like that where you can actually like get that information and fill your heart up with that kind of like those stories that move you. Because then when you see someone, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip at the very end of how to sell before you even experience a product for yourself. Let's just say, I'll give you a little hint. Let's say you talk to somebody who is really wanting to lose weight. You yourself, you don't need to lose weight. How do you sell a weight loss product to somebody who needs to lose weight when you yourself don't use that product? I'm gonna tell you that at the end. It's so good, it's so good and it works and it's authentic. That's like number one, it's authentic and it's gen genuine, okay? So how do you, who do you already know? Okay, so you are gonna wanna make two lists. Who do you already know? But then on the other list, you're gonna make a list of what does it do? What does your product, what does your service do for people? Then, it's, do you remember when we were kids and we were playing like connect the dots? You're literally, this is such a fun game too. The list of who you know or people on Facebook and the list of benefits, you're gonna have a lot more people on the list of people that you know, okay? But what you're gonna do is on the piece of paper, literally, you're gonna draw a line from like the word, let's say weight loss, to the person's name who you know wants to lose weight. The person who wants energy, who is like, let's just say, and they're not gonna say, oh, I wish I had more energy. They're gonna say things like, I'm so tired, I need an IV drip of coffee, <laughs> okay? What they're saying is, I wish I wasn't so tired, I need more energy. 
or no coffee, no worky, or my family knows, don't talk to me before my coffee. Like there are people like that, okay? Um, people who are like, it's 7 p.m. and they wanna go to bed like at 7 p.m. instead of like playing with their kids, right? People who are saying stuff like that, you need to connect that dot wherever, draw a line. What can serve them? You're selling to serve. Thank you, Bonnie Moss, for sharing. I appreciate that so much. So you're selling to serve. You're literally just connecting the dots. Then here's the thing. I teach my team this too. Use the leverage of knowing, knowing that you know what you're, sh what you're about to share with them is working for others. Your confidence is huge. Your confidence and your passion and your enthusiasm, you know what you are doing, what you are promoting is working for someone. So you can go to that person confidently and say, I, I saw your post about being totally like exhausted and wanting an IV drip of coffee. It made me laugh out loud. Seriously, you're hilarious. Hey, by the way, I think I have something that may help. I don't know. It might not. Are you open to checking it out though if it could give you more energy so you don't feel like that? No big deal if not. Make it casual, don't, don't make it weird. It's only weird if you make it weird, right? You're just simply asking, you're knocking on the door. Hey, is anyone home? You're knocking on the door. Hey, are you like wanting to fix that or are you happy being on the struggle bus? I mean like, it's totally up to them, <laughs> okay? Some people enjoy the ride on the struggle bus and they're gonna stay there for a long time. Some people are on the struggle bus and they want the first stop to get off the struggle bus, okay? If your product helps them get off the struggle bus, then you need to knock on the door and say, hey, wanna hop off the struggle bus or are you good? Some people are like, I'm good. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Let me know if you ever get tired of riding on the struggle bus. Like, it's not weird. Sales is not icky. It's just simply seeing if someone wants to find a solution. A lot of people don't. The ones that do are gonna be like, yes, Please send me whatever. And then if they, if they find it's a good fit, if it resonates with them, then bingo, there you go. You've got someone who's gonna be like texting you and sending, I got, gift, I got cards <laughs> from people who are like, thank you so much for selling me this thing. Like, right? So how do you, if you don't know people, this is like something I hear quite a lot. I don't know very many people. I have like 150 friends on Facebook. I don't know enough people to run a business and sell things. Okay, here's the thing. You need to get to know more people, first of all. So you're gonna start with the people that you know, obviously. Write those names down. You probably know more people than you think you do too. That's something I have noticed, is that generally speaking, people know more people than they think. I know, Amy, I love the struggle bus, seriously. Like beep, beep, a lot of people are on that struggle bus, y'all. Okay, especially on Facebook. On Facebook, people post about their journey on that struggle bus like all day, every day, right? So keep your eyes and ears open for those people. They're crying out for help or sympathy, either way. Okay, so first of all, most people know more people than they think they know, okay? So we think, oh, we've talked to everybody and no one here and blah, blah, blah. We, we tend to generalize those statements. So actually writing them down is a pretty good practice in getting people out of your phone contacts list. Print out your Facebook friends list. If you don't know how to do that, go Google it. You can actually print your whole Facebook friends list. And you can actually like put highlighter and write notes on the paper. It's actually formatted like with their picture and their name and the space for notes. You can actually do that, go Google it. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, so start there, obviously. Then you can go meet new people. Here's the thing. I live in a city that has literally a thousand full-time residents. I build my business online online y'all like all facebook instagram youtube that is where my people are okay i know a handful of people here in my local town everyone else i know is literally connected to me on social media that's how i chose to build my business i don't want to go to parties i don't want to go do events i want to do events with you guys like right here okay so go meet new people if you like face to face belly to belly there is chamber of commerce you can go to chamber of commerce Actually, this time of year, there are home shows, like home expos and things like that. That's really popular in the summertime or around the holidays. So here's the thing, especially if you're starting out and you're not making money in your business yet, go attend those home shows. Don't go paying for a vendor booth yet, okay? You don't need to spend a bunch of money on that. What you need to do 
is you need to go to those events and don't don't go with like your logo on your shirt or any of that stuff that's weird go simply with the intention of making friends like you're in school just go make some friends right go make some friends Brian go make some friends Amy <laughs> go make some friends James just go make friends genuine actual conversations with people hey how long have you been doing this this is awesome how long have you been doing this for really that's awesome how, what did you do before this do you have family in this area? Do y'all have fun things planned for this summer? How did you come up with the idea for this, this product? Like if they make soaps or whatever, how did you come up with this idea? Y'all, the number one thing people love to talk about is themselves and their ideas. So ask them questions. Go to those expos and go with the intent of just meeting more people. Exchange information. What I do, I don't, I don't buy business cards in my business. Um, first of all, because my stuff is mostly online. But even if I'm face to face with somebody, my business card is Facebook. So I'm there at a home expo. And if I want to connect with somebody, I say, do you have your phone on you? I would love to connect with you on social media. And so what I do this is a little hack for you guys. Oh my gosh, this is like a bonus tip. Okay, so go to their phone and, and have their phone in your hands and go to their Facebook and go find yourself on their phone, type in your name, find yourself and send yourself a friend request from their phone or have them do it if you think that's weird to like take, I would totally like, go see your phone. I, if that's not your personality, then don't do that, <laughs> okay? Um, or if you're in a situation where that would get you like punched in the throat, don't do that. So just tell them, hey, do you have your phone? Go to Facebook real quick. Um, type in my name. Yeah, that, that's me, that's my picture. Send me a friend request. That way you can accept their friend request not you send them a friend request and wait forever until they actually accept your friend request. Aha, that's a great tip for you guys. Okay, so go to those events, meet new people, have actual conversations. Now, how do you do this? You can do this in the grocery store. You can do this at the dry cleaners. You can do this in the post office. The post office is such a great place to meet people, you guys. You're standing in line. You're all totally bored. It's totally a drab, boring place, especially if you're there mailing, like you, if you're mailing products or samples or trial packs or something, y'all, you better have packaging that's fun and bright. I use bright gold envelopes in mine. Like people always ask, oh my gosh, are you like Willy Wonka selling, uh, sending the golden ticket? I'm like, yes, actually. Actually, I am. It's exactly what I'm doing. I'm sending off literally golden tickets to make people feel better than they have in years. That's literally what I tell people in the post office. And do you know, not once has somebody asked me that where they're like, oh, that's neat. And then they turn away. They're like, well, what is it? What's in that envelope? And then you can tell them, right? So if you're doing trial packs or whatever, if your company does that, you better be packaging it up super fun, bright, cool, whatever envelopes. Um, it gets attention, okay? So you can meet people in the grocery store. All, okay, belly to belly, you can totally meet people, but go with the intent of just having an actual conversation. Probably one of the best things to learn is you need to ask questions. You need to be more interested in them and finding out what they need than trying to get them interested in you. That's where people screw it up. Most people are like, I gotta have my sales pitch, like, polished and perfect and I gotta look all fly and I gotta be on my A game and say the right thing and you know whatever and be totally perfect in my pitch. Y'all you don't. You need to be more interested in that person, who they are, what they want, what their, what their problem is because then and only then are you gonna be able to provide them a solution in a genuine way where it actually comes across is you actually care. You actually care about them. Does that make sense? So if you guys are sharing this out, I can't see it by the way unless you actually type it until the video is over. So if you are sharing this, please, please, please let me know so I can give you a full name shout out because I seriously appreciate that, you guys. If y'all have a team, if y'all have people that follow you on social media who love to learn about sales and improving their business, share this out. They will love this. Okay, my next tip is online. If you want to build your business online and meet more people, if you don't know very many people, if you want to fill up your pipeline and fill your friends list at the same time, here's the thing. Facebook loves conversation, okay? So Johnny, for example, thank you so much for your comment. Here's the thing. If Johnny posted something on his Facebook 
that was providing value, okay? Facebook really favors conversation. So if Johnny is helping to start conversations on Facebook, like if he's starting a conversation and people reply to him in the conversation and then people reply to each other, that's when the magic happens in Facebook. Facebook loves it when you are a conversation starter, not just you talking to people, you creating conversations with others. So with that in mind, here's a total game changer for you if you wanna grow your business online. Number one, you need to get into conversations. This is a great example. On this video, you commenting totally is favored by Facebook. You commenting on videos, sharing videos, engaging in other people's conversations and videos, Facebook is going to show your stuff to your newsfeed more. Did y'all know that? That's an algorithm hack. We talk about algorithm all the time, but people don't even know what they're talking about when they talk about that. It's not the whole like, oh, they know when you're saying link or comment or all that garbage. They don't, that's not what it's talking about. What it's talking about is just honestly as simple as Facebook wants conversations. They don't want pitches. They don't want buy, sell. They don't want hacks. They want conversations. So if you're commenting on people's videos, hey Virginia, if you're commenting on people's videos or if you're commenting on people's posts and asking questions, that is actually an algorithm hack. If you're asking questions, don't just say, hey there, if you're commenting, comment like, this is such a great tip, where did you learn this? Asking questions, right? Um, like if Virginia were to ask Johnny something and Johnny answered Virginia and then asked a question to James, Facebook is gonna love all of you guys, okay? So starting getting into conversations, okay, in people's stuff. Now here's another tip for you guys. If you're in network marketing, Go comment and engage in the conversations of other influencers in the space. People like Eric Worre, Ray Higdon, um, Rob Sperry, Fraser Brooks. Comment on their stuff because if you're trying to interact and engage with other people who are in the same profession to learn from each other, people love to follow other people who are engaged in actually having a conversation about their industry, okay? The other thing is to provide value to those people too. Complimenting them is one thing, providing value is a whole nother. When you share my videos, you are providing value to both myself and your newsfeed, the people who follow you too, okay? So it is a huge thing. Johnny, thank you so much for that. I'm glad you follow, follow me too. Um, so here's the thing. <clears throat> the other place outside of the Facebook newsfeed is in groups. Now, don't go join 20 groups and then be like, hey, here's my thing, buy my stuff, join my team, here's my link, blah, blah, blah. You're, first of all, you're gonna get booted like real quick. <laughs> okay, tip number one, and I'll do a whole nother training on groups because um, we're running short on time, but groups, you wanna join groups of people that you actually have interests in common. So don't join the weird direct sales, post your business, MLM, blah, blah, those kind of spammy weird groups. Those are so gross. Don't. You don't wanna even recruit people from there, you don't. No one is looking to buy things or join your thing from those groups. Everyone is looking to spam their link and hopefully they get a lucky click. <laughs> That's all they're looking for, okay? When I say join groups, join groups, like if you are into gardening, join gardening groups. If you are into horseback riding, if you're into um, rescuing dogs, if you're into crocheting, Join interest groups so that, of, of things you're actually interested in, y'all, so that you can actually participate in the conversations and actually have genuine conversations. If you're like in a Facebook group of um, moms, uh, Christian moms in Detroit, like that is a really niche group. If you are also a Christian mom in Detroit, Dude, you're already part of the tribe. So go in there and contribute value. Here's the thing, Pe going back to the basics and sales, people buy from those they know, like, and trust, all three. All three, it's when you have all three, that's when you're gonna make a sale. So if you're in those groups, you have to get the whole, do they know me? Do they like me? Am I providing value? Am I like not just in here to spam my link and hopefully they click it? 
Am, am I providing value so much that they know me? And am I providing value consistently and long enough that they trust me? I'm not just in here to take, I'm in here to give, okay? So joining those interest groups and always seek to serve. Like asking questions in those groups is so good. Like if you're in those kinds of groups and somebody inevitably will post something that they're having a problem with or they're having a challenge with or whatever, asking questions before, way before, you're like, oh, I have a thing that'll totally help you do that. Ask qualifying questions. How long have you been dealing with this? Um, like I say, let's say it's a health struggle. How long have you been dealing with this? How, what other things have you tried before? What happened when you tried those things? Is that making sense? So you're, you're actually asking questions. You know what it's doing at the same time? It's showing that you actually care. You're not going straight for the jugular. You're actually caring about what they need. You're providing a solution to what their problem is, right? You're offering them a ticket off the struggle bus. <laughs> okay, are you ready for my bonus tip? This is something that I train my team on and it is so effective. I had to share it with you guys. I know lots of you guys are in other companies. You guys, this is gonna be so good for your team. Keep this video, like save it link it, keep it in your back pocket because you will eventually have someone who wants to be a part of your team. They want to be a part of your company. They have heard great things about your product or your service. They just are disqualifying themselves because they haven't experienced your product yet. Maybe they haven't even made a purchase yet and they really wanna be a part of it, but they don't think they can until they actually make a purchase. I'm gonna act like one, one fell swoop. I'm gonna help you bridge that gap, okay? Learn the phrase OPE, other people's experiences. Now, before you say, I know all that, listen. If they have the confidence and the belief based on the stories that they've heard, the testimonies that keep coming in because your product is the bomb, maybe you sell essential oils, Okay, and your stuff is like seriously helping people, like so much so that if you're in a health and wellness company, you're like seriously frustrated about compliance because you wish you could tell people how amazing balls your product is. Am I right? I know for me, like that's a frustration. I'm like so, oh, I wish compliance didn't exist. I wish the FTC and the FDA and all that stuff didn't exist because I, I want to spill the beans on how this product is helping people, but I can't. If you are in a business like that, and you have those stories, y'all, if that person has listened to those stories and your new person is like, OMG, this is like, everybody, why doesn't everybody have this product? Seriously, this product is helping so many people. Everybody needs this in their home. Everybody needs this in their medicine cabinet. Why are the drug companies selling this stuff? We have the solution. Like if that's your person and they get it and they're, they're like hair is on fire, but they're like, but I've never bought it before. I can't sell it until I buy it. I can't sell it until I have my own personal experience. Have you ever heard that before? Dude, I have. Okay, so listen, this is so good. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. You need to, first of all, give them permission. If they're new to this, they don't even know that they're allowed to sell it and promote it and share it with authority before they have a personal experience. Okay, so you, as their mentor, you need to tell them, you don't have to have personal experience. You can start helping people now. Now is when people need you. You are the one who, you're the bridge. You're the only way your contacts are gonna hear about this product is if you tell them or you're gonna have you're gonna eventually work up the nerve to finally contact your neighbor down the street and you're gonna wait so long that they've heard about it from somebody else <laughs> like seriously either they hear about it from you before you're ready which newsflash you'll never be ready um they're either gonna hear it from you or they're gonna hear it from somebody else so are you open to if i told you exactly how to do this before you ever have your own personal experience would you go do it yes Okay, game on, open the doors, here we go, okay? All you're gonna do is you're gonna say, you're just gonna equip them. We're like, we're putting their armor on. We're gonna put their helmet on. They're a nervous little newbie knight, right? And we're gonna say, hey, newbie knight, it's okay. You got your helmet, you got your chest piece, you got your leggings, you got your boots, you got your gauntlets, okay. 
You are going to be equipped. I'm going to empower you with what you need. You have the stories. Do you remember the stories of that call or that meeting that we were at and you heard how much this is helping people? Yeah, that was amazing. And let me ask you, what are one or two things that stood out to you the most on that call or at that meeting or at that convention or whatever? What did you hear that really stood out to you? Like whose story? Oh my gosh, that lady where she was talking about that her baby, like she had this rash and it was really helped a ton because of this product that she used and how it like really helped. She didn't want to use medicines and like all this kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, that like, that made me have tears in my eyes. Great. What else? Oh man, seeing that guy walk the stage and he lost like a hundred pounds and he felt like he had his whole life back and his knees didn't hurt anymore and his relationship was better, wink, wink. Oh my gosh, that was really, really inspiring. Awesome. Who do you know that's going through those things? Oh man, I mean, my cousin and my, you know, my Aunt Matilda, I mean, she's, you know, all over the place with her weight up and down, yo-yo, right? You're helping them connect those dots that we talked about at the beginning of the video. They don't even know what's going on. You're helping them. You are literally helping them connect those dots. The benefits and the experiences, those stories, to the people that they know. Now, you give them permission and say, you know what? If you called your cousin and say, hey, listen, I was at this event and I saw this lady talking about how she accomplished X, Y, Z, and I just couldn't stop thinking of you. I think I found something that'll really help you with, you know, how we were talking about the other day, your challenge with whatever, and I think I found something that would help you. I've heard nothing but great things about this product. I'm so excited. I'm ordering mine too, but I want you to do this with me. Would you? Y'all, if you're watching replay, go rewind that and write that down. Because here's the thing, there are a couple things in place. Their belief in what the product will do, their service-based attitude, they're seeking to serve, not to sell, okay? That's number two. Number three is their confidence. I'm ordering it too. Ordering it as if, as if you are in process, not I'm thinking about selling this thing and I just wanted to put some feelers out. No, <laughs> no, stop your person from doing that because that immediately tells that person you're wishy-washy, you're on the fence. So when you stop being wishy-washy, when you get off the fence, I'll stop being wishy-washy, I'll stop getting on the fence, okay? You need to not put out feelers. You need to go with confidence saying, I've heard nothing great things about this product, seriously. They've sold $2 billion in orders of this stuff in the last six years. I'm ordering it. I know it's gonna help you. It's gonna help me. It's gonna help the world. Seriously, do this with me. Are you in? That is confidence. That is posture. That is speaking it into existence. Y'all, you can also use the words when you are at listening to a call, when you are at an event, when you are at your friends uh, on your team's Zoom. If somebody is sharing a story, which they better be, you better be in a company that's sharing stories, experiences a lot, okay? Because then you can say, yesterday I heard from someone I know who experienced this, this, and this on this product. I know someone who quote that please write that down i know someone who here's the thing that will give you so much leverage because if it's somebody that you know on facebook if it's somebody on your team if it's somebody cross line on stage top leader mega millionaire in your company whatever i know someone who had the same results that i'm trying to give you i know someone who lost 100 pounds on this product that i'm ordering and i'd love for you to do this too are you in i've heard nothing but great things I know someone who their baby doesn't have that weird redness on their leg anymore because of this thing that I found. I'm ordering it. Will you order it too? I know someone who, okay? Other people's experiences. You can also, if you're brand new to this, you can also use the same thing with like your group, our team, our group, our community. So if you don't feel confident saying my team, cause your team is kind of small right now cause you're just starting, you can say our team. So coordinate with your sponsor, coordinate with your upline, get those stories, maximize. Like if your team leader just did a Zoom training, okay? And they had a bunch of people on it. You could just say, our team just had a Zoom and I was so excited. I know someone who 
accomplish this, this, and this in their business. Leverage other people's experiences as your own. You know someone who, okay? The confidence and the belief and the seek to serve, that is a skill set that will take you so far in your business. So if you found this helpful, if you found this valuable, I would love for you to share this out. Let me know if you did share it, if you find this um, helpful at all. I'd love to share more stuff like this. is like tactical, cool training of stuff you can take to the bank, like literally. If you are new to my videos, type new below so I can say hi to you. If you're catching this on the replay, say hi on the replay. I appreciate you guys. I hope this was helpful. Share this out to your teams if it was. I appreciate you guys and thank you. I will see you on another video. Bye everyone.